season's greetings, everyone. We're less than a week from Christmas. In fact, it's uh, the Saturday before it. It's a cold, snowy, wintry day here in Royal Oak, Michigan. And behind me, you see this beautiful house. And back in the 1800s, when people wanted more cowbell here in this area, they couldn't go to the Blue Oyster Cult. They went to Orson Starr, who manufactured them. And the house behind me is the house he lived in with his family. It got passed down from generation to generation, and then sometime in the late 20th century, Royal Oak, Michigan bought the house from the family, and it's now a landmark. Um, I'd like to do a painting of this house, so I welcome all of you to join me in my studio and watch my process as I convert this house to a knife oil painting. Okay, I'm here in my basement studio, and I'm ready to work on my painting. I have a photo reference already all set, and I, you know, it's time to get my canvas going. Now, we've all seen Bob Ross, and what he does is like within a half hour, he can take a beautiful white blank canvas and turn it into a finished painting. Well, I don't work on white canvases, and I don't work directly. Most artists don't. We like to work with some sketching done first, some type of preparation before we even get to putting a single dab of paint onto it. So what I have, excuse me, I have a canvas here that I'm going to be painting on. And as you can see, it's not white. Um, it's a nice um, 16 by 20 inch canvas I bought from Blick. It's one of my favorite brands. It's it's a, a thick canvas, like one inch thick, and this way it doesn't need a frame. I painted the sides like a deep, like forest green to go good with uh, some of the subject matter. The star house has trees around it, pine trees, things like that. So I thought a nice green trim would work well around it. But the main area has a warm tone that I just put on there, just a basic tone to canvas with, um, it's a mixture of, I believe yellow ochre and maybe some red that I just smeared all over and then even took some paper towel and wiped it down so it wasn't too dense. And this is gonna be my tone I put under the painting and sometimes it may show through in parts and if it does all the way around, that's fine. I'll add a warmth as well as a unity throughout the whole painting. So I have to get my sketch onto here. It's more, again, of a matter of just taking a photo and just copying the sketch exactly. I, I need to compose my shots. Um, actually compose the photos that I've already taken because the photos I've taken were just any old way just to get a whole, I got a whole, I got too much of it into my photo. And I want to crop it down to just the essential elements into a nice, pleasing composition. And that, for this painting, I did it on my computer. Now here's a batch of shots I took on a beautiful sunny day of the star house. And I went through different angles and then when I brought them home, I went through them carefully and found an angle that I liked. And then I brought that into Photoshop uh, here's one I took a couple days earlier. It was like a gloomy, snowy day, and I was thinking of doing that. And then the very next day I saw it was sunny, so I went back out and took more photographs because I preferred the sunny, where I could get some nice sunlight and some nice shadows. So this is a, well, let me show you the original image first. This is the one that I, I took. And since I just used a basic phone camera, you'll notice that some of these angles I mean, so are these lines rather are going at an angle. The trees here and the building as well. And I wanted them straight up and down. And thanks to Photoshop, I was able to straighten it out. And I also add a little bit of saturation to the colors and using the levels lightened up some of the areas in the shadows so I could see what the, they look like better. And I was able to get, you know, a better looking image from it. Another thing I did was I wanted some some of these trees moved more in there so I could fill up this dark. I, I want more darker area, more darks in here to help set off some of the light areas here. So using the 
some of the cloning tool. I was able to clone some of the trees over here. You can see the you know the repeating from what's going on over here. But adding some you know some more dark here and breaking down too much of that sky area. You know just just getting into there, and that way I'm hopefully I can get more emphasis on this area here, the nice big sunlight area here, because that'll be more stark and plain and stand out more. I also like this, you know, nice picket fence going around and it's making these beautiful purple shadows on this side. Uh, I got some nice Christmas bunting and a ribbon there. And yeah, it, it's a lovely house and this will, this will be nice to paint. I got different colors. I got some still, le some leaves are still on the trees that are orange. I got some greens in the pines. It's a white house, but I got some the sunlight is making the whites kind of yellow and they're contrasting with the shadow areas, which are bluish purple. And a lot, lot of lovely colors all around. So this will be nice to paint. But again, this is still too much. I still want to compose it. So I brought it into another program. And I'm sorry, this is the composition I ended up with. So you don't see the entire photo in here. I cropped it to the way I want it to be in the painting. Now, I'm still not even going to duplicate this exactly. This metal bumper, I'm not even going to stick that in the painting. That's, I, don't, I don't find that attractive at all, so I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist. Although, I will keep the sidewalk and the snow. Although, the snow, I will continue in the corner. I won't have that little bit of curb showing. I'll just continue the snow here. But, you know, I'll have the sidewalk. And for the most part, yeah, it's going to stay looking like this. You know, I'll try to show indicate some of the houses in the background and yeah, forgive my shaky camera but yeah this is what I'm going to work on so I took this image this this cropping um, and printed it out just as is and that's what I have downstairs okay so I have a printout at a hundred percent of the composition I want to do, the one I did on a computer where I composed it just the way I wanted it to be. It's printed at 100% of what the final painting will be. That'll make it easier for me to recreate the drawing and get the architectural elements in the right size in the right way. Um, I did like a very light charcoal tracing using a different printout where I was able to put some charcoal on the back of the print and it just, just kind of like went through with a pencil just to get just the basic sizes down. But I want to draw over this charcoal because it'll come off too easily, it'll smear. So I'm going to go over the drawing with here's a little bit of acrylic paint of burnt sienna. I'm going to stick with acrylic just for this beginning part. The sides of it I painted with acrylic and this undertone, this orange undertone was also acrylic paint. You can paint with oil on top of acrylic, but you can't do it the other way around. So I'm going to start with acrylic. I'm also going to do this beginning drawing with acrylic paint. Where I'll go over these lines, refine them, maybe try to get some of the values down. Indicates where I want, you know, the darks and the lights and what I want emphasized to get my focal point going. Then once that's done, I let that dry. It being acrylic paint, it's not going to take long to dry. And then after that, I can start the oil painting itself. So let's get the drawing going. I'm using burnt sienna because it's darker than the tone I have here so I'll be able to see the drawing. So I'll give an example here. Here's a tree here and hopefully I should go over a line here. Yes, I think I'll I think I'll be able to see that. Um, I was either going to do it in maybe a uh, a cadmium red, but yeah, I think I'll stick with uh, burnt sienna. So yeah, I, th I think I can see that. So now let's get the rest of the drawing going.
Okay, I think I've got my basic drawing down. I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm gonna start uh, get my oil paints ready, get them set up, get my knives ready, and start the fun part, the painting. The first part I'm gonna do is blocking it in. I'll start probably with the darkest darks and do thin applications of dark paint for the darkest areas. And then after that, I'm gonna to try to fill the canvas up with basic shapes and colors, get my values down best I can, and a lot of the colors, and just make it very blocky at first. This will do two things. One, it'll get my composition set and started, and also, it'll give me a layer of wet paint, because I love to paint wet on top of wet. So give me that first nice layer in which I can put nice thick applications of paint on top of there and get wonderful effects. So I'm gonna turn my camera off for now, let this dry, and come back later. Thanks for watching.